Hi guys, this is Anton Matlawani and today we're here with Capitalism. Hi. Hey, so it's only the second date of your European tour. Guess you're pretty jet lagged. Uh, we're not so bad actually. Well, me, I'm not so bad, but my band, yeah, they're a little bit tired. How was yesterday in Berlin? It was pretty good actually for a first show, you know, it's always a little bit crazy the first day. It's setting up all the stuff, you know, all the, the gear arrives and everything, but yeah, it went well. It was really cool. Your tour line up with Septic Flash and the board is impressive. Did you already have the time to hang out with the guys or uh, is everyone very concentrated? Uh, you know, we know the guys, it's been a while, we toured with the board already, Septic Flash are friends of the band and everything, so you know, we have still like 43 days to go <laughs> to the hangout, so yeah, it's going to be a long tour, but it's going to be fun, you know, the guys are cool, the bus is really nice, the venues are cool, and like the, the pre sales are really, really good, so we know there's going to be a lot of people coming to the show, so we expect like really good turnouts. Great. So in your last album, Ghosts and Gods, um, deals with the battle of religion versus science. I guess most metalheads would actually stand in for the science side and more and more people get afraid of religion because of good reasons these days. Yes. Are you still sometimes afraid of science as well? Afraid of science? No, I don't think so. Uh, well, some people use it as an answer for everything. I'm not sure that's the case, uh, you know, but surely it's stands in a more neutral stance than religion and uh, you know we find we find problems come comes out of technology and science you know like all the industrial uh, world we live in the pollution stuff like this but also you know solutions come out of this so yeah i don't think we can expect you know more problems out of science than religion if anything it it gives answers to uh, to stuff that's not explained yet you know that religion started to you know, easy answers for big questions like creation and stuff like that. So, yeah. <laughs> we could talk about this for a <laughs> while, but, you know. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Have you grown up in a religious family? Not at all. Uh, myself, I was never baptized, you know. So, I went into, like, uh, yeah, pretty much athe atheist lifestyle since I was born. So, yeah. it's because when you're born in a religious family, it's kind of hard to, you know, detach from that. Um, me, I wasn't influenced you know, since I was born, so it's kind of, it's quite easy to detach from this and to see it with perspective, you know what yeah. I mean? You have a song line that says, in this world you better live for something or you're going to die for nothing. And I think that pretty much sums up the spirit of cataclysm, yeah, that, that uh, if you work hard, it pays off in the end. Exactly. Since you go out to meet many fans after the show, have you ever met someone who said that his life really changed after Yes. Listening to Cataclysm? Yes, we've heard uh, we've heard many fans, like you know, die-hard fans, that they said in moments of you know hard times of their lives, they were, you know, one of the things that kept them going was you know the songs and the message behind the songs, and that I think that's one of the reasons there's a lot of people that like the band, you know, because there's a strong message behind it. The, you know, some bands out there they have really good music, but sometimes lyric-wise, you know, there's not a lot of content to be transmitted or something like this, but Maurizio, as you know, is really strong I ideas and the concept is pretty strong with the band, so yeah. Even though you're not a political band, your lyrics always talk about social problems yes. or corrupt leaders of the world. Yeah, yeah, it does. Did you ever face censorship or probably see some Christians demonstrating in front of your concert <laughs> venues? <laughs> no, we haven't had protest protests but I've seen like uh, I've seen bands with protests like uh, we I remember a show with Belfagor a band we toured <laughs> with yeah they had <laughs> protests you know because these guys are always bringing in pig heads and you know you like pig blood <laughs> and stuff like that you know but no uh, we've never had such kind of problems uh, I think maybe in a way like the band is seen as a black sheep in the industry that's also one of the reasons uh, you know we have one song on the last record that's named The Black mm -hmm. Sheep because it's always g been a little bit put aside media-wise, magazines, stuff like that. Uh, maybe because of this kind of attitude the band has, Maurizio has, and you know, like this, this fuck off attitude, you know, we're still gonna keep doing our style of music no matter what, you know, no matter what the trends and stuff like that. So sometimes it's a little bit harder because when you, you're more in a trend, you can actually sell more records, you know, <laughs> when the fashion is for this kind of like the core, the, the core movement and, you know, all these different type of movements. So we never kind of like, I'm quite new in the band myself, but, you know, the band has never really went into a, a box and 
kept being kept there. You know. Yes, as you said, you're the, the new guy of the band. But, but the other guys have done this for years and years, started as teenagers. But how about for you personally, when did you first feel like a rock star? Maybe just someone coming up and asking for your autograph for the very first time. Uh, I never really felt like a rock star, you know. It's, it's kind of fun to do this stuff because you feel that people appreciate your work. And you know, me it's all about, you know, giving. And when you have this, it's kind of like the, the harvest of, of the hard work, you mm -hmm. know, because you know, behind an album, now it looks, it looks a bit like insignificant nowadays because you just, people just click download the album and it's gone, you know, <laughs> but you don't know how much work there's behind this ideas and, you know, making things better and working on that, you know, on, on a one year time span, like the last album was incredibly, uh, not hard, but, uh, you know, we put so much heart into that one that, you know, it's kind of like, it's weird when, when you think of it, you just click, click yeah. and all the work <laughs> is gone when you download for free and stuff like that. But, you know, a lot of, a lot of fans are still showing support, coming to the shows, buying album, buying the merch. That's, that's what keeps the band going. You know, we, if we don't have this, it's going to be hard in, in the next years to, to keep going like that. So we're, we're glad because the following we've had is really, really good. You know, so yeah. And you released some really interesting merchandise last year with your own beer and barbecue sauce. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we did. Uh, it's kind of cool, you know. We had uh, we had offers, you know, from a, a really good company that makes hot sauce. Because the point of that, of course, it's it's a merch product, but it's not to, to put out merch just for fun, you know. Because the stuff is actually really good. The beer we chose from a, a Belgian. Uh, a Belgian beer maker, which you know, Belgium is known for its beer all over yep. the world, and Sven knows <laughs> they, they make the best beer, so our we cannot go wrong, you know. So, so we, we tasted the beer at Grass Pop last year, and the guy from the brew was like, Okay, oh, you want it more bitter, more you know, sparkling, you know. <laughs> I was like, Wow, it's amazing, you can actually customize your own beer like this. Wow, yeah, yeah, so that's amazing, and not too strong, you know, because you have to adapt to people, you know, because here, uh, you know, in, in uh, Europe, the, the beer is a little bit different than in Canada, yeah. and the beer is also really different in US. In US, it's you know they're used to lower alcohol. Uh, in Europe, it's not as sparkling as in Canada, so we have to kind of take a best fit. Like the most international beer, actually. Kind of, yeah, <laughs> to make it like you know the best fit. But I think we we accomplished that. It's not too strong, uh, but still it gives a kick. You know, it's stronger than regular American beers at four percent. So yeah, it's six point six six. Also, we <laughs> wanted to make it like a funny a little bit. But yeah, it, it's it's a good balance. It doesn't taste too strong. It's actually super tasty. You know, with the uh, coriander seed, I think in the in the recipe. So it's a little bit. Uh, sweet at the same time. Same thing for the hot sauce. We had two. One is more like regular uh, for the average consumer, like of hot sauce, and one is more for the advanced <laughs> guy, the ghost, the ghost fire, which is more like smoky flavor. I myself eat, eat a lot of this stuff. You know, even my guys, they can believe sometimes on to, and uh, yeah, it's if you don't have problems like like uh, ulcers or stuff, you, you can actually eat a lot of this, and it's actually healthy for you. They they, they did a study, and I think they had like. People eating spicy stuff, uh, six days a week, they actually have uh, more longevity than other people, you know, so, yeah. so it's good stuff. <laughs> and you can put it on top of the catering socks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if the catering t is tasteless, you just, well, you can add it everywhere. I put this on my eggs in the morning, now everything is, oh. yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's really cool. The whole band seemed to be full of workaholics. Yeah, we are. And well, so, what, what's the first thing that you do when you come back home and you really need to relax? Because I mean, there's this post-tour depression that many people get, actually. Well, yeah, there is this thing like it's it's crazy for the time you're on tour. But I mean, when you have work, it can get boring. Me, I said, I always say like, as I prefer getting bored. Uh, getting busy than being bored that's what I mean so <laughs> I'm always working even on tour like earlier today I was working on the new XDO material so all the time we're constantly working and that's that's what keeps us going you know like the, we take a little break of course coming back from a tour but you know it doesn't take long like two weeks and we're back into the writing mode well, as, no, as soon as we come back this year starting to, to write the new XDO record and then uh, after this it's gonna be again uh, we're doing more shows in June than after this. It's, we have to keep the ball rolling. That's how bands uh, can actually succeed nowadays, always yeah. working on something. 
even on the road, you know. So uh, while the guys partying, because that's that's what, what they usually do, I, I try to work a little bit more. So we have me and the other guys. We have a little bit a different schedule, but in the end, you know, we all need like, each other. Uh, like Steph is the party guy, hanging out with people, <laughs> drinks until five in the morning, six, seven sometimes, and me, I wake up at seven. <laughs> and, uh, I well, usually sometimes wake up at the time uh, they go. To, sorry, they, uh, I usually go to bed sometimes at the time they, they wake up, but uh, it's for a good cause. In the end, we we come out with you know good songs out of this because we we're writing and making things work. So, yeah. What can you tell us about the new XD already? Uh, I can tell you that so far we have three songs done and it's going to be a major step up uh, in songwriting and in, in everything, in orchestrations. We hired this guy from uh, the band, you might know Kara Chengren from Holland yeah. and uh, he's doing crazy scoring for uh, Hollywood and stuff like this and for his own band as well and uh, we, had, we have one song that the orchestrations are already made for and it's completely insane, like uh, if, you li if you like X Deal, you're going to go crazy on this last record. A, a little bit like uh, The Last Cataclysm compared to the other albums. If you felt there was a step up, well, you're going to feel the same thing in the, the next X deal. Amazing. When will it come out, come out? It's due to come out in February 2017. So oh, okay. I know it's, it, it sounds like a while, but you know, it's still being written and then we mm. have to you know, record and then master and the time to put it out on an album. So yeah. Cataclysm always comes back to one topic, the end of the world. Yeah, it does. <laughs> In your personal opinion, how do you think will the world come to an end? Well, you've seen like several movies lately, post-apocalyptic movies. Um, yeah, I mean, there was this good, really good one which portrayed the uh, future uh, Children of Men with Clive Owen, I think, um, which makes a pretty good portrait. So. It's gonna get crazy with uh, immigration. You're gonna see like you already see with like the terrorist stuff and the the measures, the control over people, uh, that's going up and up. You know, you can tell if it's conspiracy. You can tell it's if it's real. It's it's hard to tell, but for sure things are gonna get more extreme, more control over people, and um, yeah, like you know, you know how it works. Uh, with capitalism and how things are going, it's the the top one percent that's still taking all the loot, and all the other people are left to, you know, with the rest. <laughs> Basically, that's the problem. So the middle class going to the lower class, and the a little fraction of the middle class going in the upper class. So you know, the Illuminati and stuff like this. Mm. That's that's what you know. The band's talking the song, kill the elite and stuff like this. Yeah. It's it's about you know some some people controlling most of the people. I, it's because I have studied sociology and I don't want to get too dark in this oh kind God. of topic. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's kind of weird how things are going. So the band kind of, we're, we're talking about that. We're trying to you know, get people to get conscious about this, you know. Final question, very important question. Have you seen the new Star Wars? Sorry, I didn't. No? <laughs> no, I'm not bad geek. <laughs> but yeah, my, my singer uh, did it. Uh, I went to the movie. Uh, like most of my band, I think, pretty saw it. But me, I live in the woods. I'm disconnected from, from the rest of the world. So I haven't had a chance yet. And the tour was, you know, the movie came out, what, December 20, something like this? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. so there was only two weeks before the tour. So I was too busy doing <laughs> other stuff. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much.